In my previous vlog, we spent some time in the beautiful city of Cape Town, and although the weather didn't entirely agree with our itinerary, we did manage to make the most of our very short time in the mother city and do a fair bit of wet weather exploring. I'm on my way back from Cape Town now, and while it would be very easy to travel the eight hours home in one go, I've decided to take the scenic route and divide my trip into two sections. Today we'll be traveling through the Cape Winelands, where we'll be seeing some beautiful misty mountains, wine farms and winding rivers, and then we'll be passing through the Karoo, a much drier, more desolate part of the country. And after passing through Sievervierkspoort and crossing the Swartberg Mountains, we'll be finishing our day at our halfway point, Oetswin, a very old and very historic town with an interesting past. Our road trip today starts in the breathtaking Cape Mountains which separate suburban Cape Town and the majority of the Cape Winelands. There are two roads that we can take here, one will take us through a tunnel underneath the mountain and the other will take us through a winding pass over the misty peaks. I've got plenty of time to kill so despite being unsure of what the weather might be doing up in the pass, I decide to take the path less travelled and take a slow drive over the mountains and I certainly don't regret it. So we're busy driving through what is probably one of the most beautiful mountain passes in South Africa. There are many really, really beautiful ones. Unfortunately, it's really, really foggy today, so we're not going to be able to see very far. Um, but we have got a few glimpses of the mountains and it's really, really pretty. A few years ago, well, it was quite a while ago actually, they built the, the toll tunnel that goes straight through the mountains so that you didn't have to go all the way up the pass. The pass here is called Dutoy's Kloof Pass. And Dutoy, if you, you listen to the name, it's actually quite a French sounding name. Um, same, so is the Huguenot Toll Tunnel. The Huguenots were actually the French settlers that arrived in South Africa a long time ago and settled in this area. And, and those French settlers brought with them the ability to, to make wine. So they would farm fruit and farm grapes over here. They'd make wine. Um, they'd, they'd farm all kinds of different fruits here. The, a lot of those surnames still exist today, like Duplessis, Dutoy, French sounding surnames in the Afrikaans culture. Those people are fully Afrikaans, but they're of French descent. You can see how beautiful this is behind me here. That's the town of Paul behind me. And you can actually see the N1 road at the bottom there. It's just about to go through the tunnel. So we're actually standing on the mountain that the, um, that the N1 goes through. But anyway, let's get back in the truck. Let's keep on driving and let's get some more footage. We're going through a really beautiful section here into Toys Kloof. So hopefully the, the, the mist has cleared a little bit there and we can actually see something. I'm surprised that there haven't been more accidents on this road because it's so difficult to focus on your driving when you have landscapes like this all around you. You can imagine what it must have been like for the first settlers when they arrived in the Cape and started trekking through these mountains. At the time, the only indigenous people that were here were the Khoisan and there weren't many of them, which means that most of these areas would have probably been completely uninhabited. joking when I said this is one of the most beautiful passes in the world. I mean it must be a look at this place. You've got mountains all over the place. The fog is just lifting. We've got um, waterfalls all behind us here. I don't know if you can see them but there's a waterfall there. Uh, there's a waterfall up there. There's a waterfall down there. Just absolutely everywhere. And yeah, as the sun starts to peek through here you can really just see how beautiful this place is. In fact it's kind of hard to drive through here because you just get distracted all the time by the, by the views. Um, yeah, that, this is definitely one of the best um, uh, roads I've ever been able to drive through in South Africa so if you, if you want to do a road trip here um, this is definitely something you'll want to come through but yeah that's the Toys Kloof Pass we're going to keep going that direction um, into the Cape Winelands um, show you some wine farms and then keep on going let's do it As we move out of Dutoy's Kloof, the mountains are suddenly replaced with wine farms and if you've ever bought South African wine, there's a good chance that it's from this region. I actually stayed in this valley a few years ago and did some wine tasting and it was an absolutely awesome experience. From here we move towards another set of mountains and into the Hex River Valley, where it starts to become a little bit drier. So down there behind us is Hex River Valley, it goes all the way along here, really really beautiful, especially in the autumn when those uh, the, all those vines are like a nice orange color 
and all the fruit trees are nice orange kind, all the leaves are falling off. This whole valley becomes really, really beautiful. Um, over there, behind us over there, is a mountain called Matruisberg. It's one of the highest mountains in the Western Cape, I think the second highest. And it's, it's um, hidden there, you can't see it properly, there's a smaller mountain in front of it. Um, in the winter, Matruisberg gets a lot of snow, and a lot of the local guys will actually travel up there. And um, there's a road that goes all the way along the back of the mountain to the top. So you see a lot of photos posted on social media and stuff of, of guys going up there and building snowmen and stuff like that. Because down here at the lower altitudes, there's not that much snow. We really don't get snow, even in the middle of winter. It's not really a regular thing. But up in the mountains there, where it's like higher than 2,000 meters, snow is quite a regular thing in the winter. So I'll put some inserts here of all the Matruisberg snow photos and some of the snow around South Africa, as you can see. A lot of people don't associate South Africa with snow, or Africa in general with snow, but we do get some very cold weather, especially down south of here. Alright, so we have now officially left the wineland area of the Western Cape. We're going out the Hex River Pass to higher altitude and we are going into the Karoo now. We're officially into the Karoo and everything's starting to get quite dry. So no more like fruit and vegetable farming. Um, this is too dry for that now. So we're now into like sheep farming area. Um, you know, you might find some game farms in this part of the Karoo here. Don't know what the, the road ahead is going to bring because I've actually never driven this road before but I'm hoping that it's a tarred road all the way. I know we're going to be going through a mountain pass um, closer to Oats and through the Swartberger which are like big big mountains even higher than than uh, Matruisberg that you just saw there. Um, so it's going to be interesting but um, hopefully we can get through that pass without any big issues. So let's see how we go. Now this is where it gets interesting because I decide to turn off the main road and drive along a small windy road that isn't even marked properly on a map. I can see that it leads to where I need to be but the idea definitely sounded better in my head than it did when I actually started driving. So I am a little bit concerned because um, I can see where we're heading and I've never traveled this road before but when I looked on Google Earth it looks like there's a dirt road and I'm, I'm not 100% sure what the condition of the dirt road is and I've seen no other cars on this road so if for whatever reason that my bucky does break down on that road or if the road's too damaged to actually go through then I'm going to be stuck here so I actually stocked up at the, the shop a little bit back there with a whole lot of water just in case I have to camp up there for the night that's just worst case scenario though but yeah we're heading in that direction it's going to be pretty cool a real adventure beautiful area here nice and and dry it looks kind of like uh, Nevada or um, Utah or something like that Arizona so yeah let's keep going see what happens the dirt road turned out perfectly fine and this actually ended up being the best part of my entire journey it just goes to show if you don't take risks and you don't explore, you won't know what's out there. And although the landscape around me was a little bit desolate and dead, I felt like I was in paradise. So I was a little bit concerned about what the dirt road would be like, but it's actually really, really surprisingly good. In fact, the dirt roads in the Western Cape seem to be better than the tar roads in the Eastern Cape, <laughs> which is quite funny. But um, yeah, it's very wild here and, and uh, still no cars. So I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping I don't have any trouble here, but yeah, it's beautiful, really, really beautiful. We come to Sieva Vierkspoort and it gets even more beautiful from here as we start passing through the Swartberg Mountains and it feels like the earth is rising up right next to us. As we go further through the pass, we start to catch glimpses of Sieva Vierkspoort Peak the highest mountain in the Western Cape at more than 2,300 meters. And an interesting fact about Sieva Vierkspoort Peak is that it's one of only two mountains in the whole of South Africa that are classified as ultra-prominent mountains. Despite being significantly lower in altitude than some of the other mountains in South Africa which are more than a kilometer higher. Prominence and altitude are two very different things and although this mountain is not necessarily at high altitude, it is even more prominent than mountains like the Matterhorn and Eiger in Switzerland. 
We eventually reach a main road again, head east, and after an hour or so, we start pulling into our destination for the day, Oatswin. Oatswin is a quaint and sleepy Karoo town in the middle of nowhere with slight hints of grandeur and when I checked in at my hotel and started to walk through the corridors I was reminded of this town's history by some beautiful historical photographs lining the passageways. These photos are mostly of the hotel but if you look closely at the guests you'll notice that they don't exactly look like rural farmers. That's because there was a point in time when ostrich feathers were worth the same as diamonds gram for gram and Oatswin was the biggest producer of ostrich feathers on earth. This made the town extremely wealthy and also attracted many important people. The feathers have since lost their value a bit but Oatswin still produces 80% of the entire world's ostrich products and today there are more than 200,000 ostriches in the town. The town may not be as wealthy as it once was but it's an awesome place to visit as a tourist especially if you're interested in history. That's where we're going to bring this one to an end. I had so much fun filming this one. And in the next video, we'll be hitting the coast and traveling along what I believe is South Africa's most beautiful holiday tour road, the Garden Route. It's going to be awesome, so stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.